Hello everyone and welcome to lecture number 12. In the previous lecture, lecture number 11, we have discussed about the uh, microwave uh, sources. Okay, we have discussed about microwave sources. Uh, in that, in that we have discussed two cavity crystal. We have discussed two cavity crystal. Then multi cavity. and reflex <clears throat> okay and reflex crystal multi-cavity crystal and reflex crystal okay so this was what we have discussed up till now now in today's lecture we are going to study microwave devices we are going to study we are going to study microwave devices okay in that in microwave devices we are going to study gun diode we are going to study we are going to study number one we are going to study gun diode Then number two, that is spin diode. <clears throat> and three, we will study impact diode. Okay? We will study impact diode. Now, let us start the discussion of microwave devices with the first one. That is, let us start our microwave devices discussion with the first one that is gun diode. Okay? Now this gun diode gun diode comes under the transferred electron devices. Comes under TED. Okay? It comes under TED. TED is nothing but transfer electron devices. Transfer <coughs> electron devices. Okay? Gun diode comes under transferred electron devices. So, first of all, before going to the discussion of gun diode, before going to the discussion of gun diode, let us understand let us understand what is transferred electron device. Okay? Let us understand what are transferred electron devices and what is the phenomenon or the operation or the <coughs> physics behind the transferred electron devices. Now, we will start the discussion with transferred electron device. We will see the name first of all itself. You can see the name that is transferred electron transferred electron right <clears throat> means the name itself is suggesting that electron is transferred from some point to another point okay this electron is transferred to some point to another point that is nothing but the transfer of electron okay and the devices which works on the transfer of electrons okay are comes under transfer electron devices but remember this transfer is <coughs> sorry if this transfer is going to happen between the inter energy band so the transfer of electron is going to happen between the transfer of electron is going to happen between two energy levels okay we will study in depth that uh, what will be that energy level okay we will study in depth that what will be that energy levels? Those are nothing but L valley and U valley. Valleys of energy levels are there. We will see that. Okay. Let us see some of the statements. Let us uh, uh, write down some of the statements for transfer electron devices. What kind of properties it's having? Actually, transfer of transfer electron devices works on the principle of negative resistance region. 
Okay, which works on the negative resistance region. Now let us understand what is the negative resistance region. So we will write some of the points for transfer electron devices. Transfer electron devices known as PEDs. Okay? It is known as EED. Right? Now, in a positive resistance, <coughs> in a positive resistance, in a positive resistance, the current in a positive resistance, the current through the resistance <coughs> current through the resistance and the voltage across it are in phase are in phase remember this point positive resistance is nothing but the two terminal devices <coughs> or normal normal electronic devices in which we will find a normal resistance ok the increase in resistance that is due to the voltage and current if we will find that it is been noted that current and voltage will be in phase Normally we will study the in phase relations of voltage and current, but what happens, <coughs> what happens, what happens in negative resistance in a negative resistance, the current and voltage the current and voltage are out of phase by 180 degree ok so in the negative resistance region or in the negative resistance devices the current and voltage will be out of phase by 180 degree. So, the voltage drop, what happens after this, that the voltage drop, what happens that the voltage drop, voltage drop across, it is negative. Voltage drop across it is negative and power of minus I square R is generated. So the power of minus I square R is generated by the power supply associated with the negative resistance. Generated by the power supply <coughs> ok power supply associated with the negative resistance in other words what we can say is in other words what we can say is what we can say is positive resistance absorbs power ok this is the normal electronic behavior what we have seen in the electronic devices what we naturally or normally come across the electronic devices positive resistance absorbs power or consumes power from the power supply but <coughs> the negative resistance generate power negative resistance generates power means these are active devices 
negative resistance generate powers and those are actually active devices while the positive resistance are passive devices okay <coughs> so we will start the discussion of gun down so this is the small introduction to t the transfer electron devices one more thing which uh, i think we should go and write that is transfer electron devices do not have junctions transfer electron devices transfer electron devices do not have junction property okay <coughs> transfer electron devices are bulk devices are bulk devices having no junction they do not have junction okay <clears throat> or they do not have gates they do not have gates as compared to microwave transistors okay <clears throat> this is the this is the foremost property which we have to remember okay that transfer electron devices are bulk devices bulk de devices they do not have junction they do not have junction property okay they don't have junction or gates they don't have gates they don't have gates they don't have junction they are bulk devices bulk devices means they will be having a point contact point contact junction it will not have surface area to area contact junction it will have point contact junction okay it will have point contact junction means if you have this is an n type then p type material will be something like this this is known as point contact this is known as point contact okay this area you can see that this area will act as a point contact device or you can have contact like this okay you have contact like this this kind of uh, uh, device structure will be there in the gun effect device gun effect diode okay it will be in the gun diode so this is all about the transfer electron devices gun diode is working on ted principle that is transfer electron devices we want to discuss gun diode okay it works on transfer electron devices gun diode is working on the principle of transfer electron devices okay now what is gun diode as we already already have seen the transfer electron devices are bulk devices okay transfer electron devices are bulk devices let us see the structure of gun diode let us see the structure of gun diode let us see the structure of a gun diode okay normally gallium arsenide is used gallium arsenide is used you will see the energy band diagram energy band structure okay of gallium arsenide this is g a a s energy bands okay you will have one bigger one over here that is field then you will have formidal then you have another field okay then you will have small formidal and upper one okay <clears throat> let me write the name this is field energy band this are field energy band this is formidal this is formidal gap okay 
forbidden gap is nothing but energy band gap. Remember, forbidden gap is nothing but energy band gap. Okay. Then uh, this is partly filled energy band. This is partly filled energy band. This is partly filled energy band. Okay. This is partly filled energy band. <coughs> then in between we will have in between we will have okay so this is nothing but narrow forbidden gap this is nothing but narrow forbidden gap this is remember this is a compound semiconductor gas gallium arsenide is a compound semiconductor and it will have compound semiconductor will have such kind of forbidden gap such kind of energy band diagrams okay you can find out that over here there are two forbidden gaps this is the first one and this is the second one there are two energy band gaps okay and the upper one is empty energy band this is empty energy band Empty energy band. Okay, the upper one is empty energy band. So this is the Venn diagram of gallium arsenide. Here you will see, you can observe that this is the field energy band. This is the main forbidden gap energy band gap. This is partly filled energy band. You have a narrow forbidden gap and an empty band gap and empty energy band gap. Okay, EB is nothing but energy band. EB. Is corresponding to energy band. Now, what happens over here is we can see the E K diagram. What we can see is we can see the E K diagram. Okay, we can study. This is K. K is nothing but wave vector. Wave vector, and you will have energy over here. You will have. You will have energy. Okay. You will see the E K energy band gap, energy and wave vector diagram. It will be find that we will find that we will have this is valence band. Okay. Then. We will have a lower value. We will have a lower value. This is the lower value, and we will have another value. That is, this is known as. Upper value. Okay, this is the upper value. This is band gap forbidden band. <coughs> forbidden gap or forbidden band. Okay, and this is the conduction band. This is the conduction band. Okay, we are talking with respect to bulk devices. Remember, we are talking with respect to bulk devices where we will not have a surface-to-surface -surface PN junction. We will not have surface-to-surface -surface any gate connected over here. Okay. Now, what happens when you will have a sufficient amount of 
when you apply a sufficient amount of potential or electric field with respect to this energy band gap, there is going to be the electron is going to be transferred from one value to lower valence value to upper value. This lower value, this valence band to conduction band. In conduction band, you have two values that is lower value and upper value. Normally, normally with some potential or some field. Electron will transfer from balance band to the conduction band. Okay, it's going to be transferred from balance band to conduction band. Okay, from balance band to conduction band E. <coughs> and as the applied field increases, when we increase the amount of applied field, applied field, the electron gain energy from it and move upwards in the U value, that is upper value. This is U value, and this is V value. Okay, this is V value, and this is U value. Okay, this is represented by V value and U value. When you apply an uh, electric field or increase the field with respect to the applied field over here, when you increase the field after certain value, okay, that particular value will depend upon uh, types of material. When you increase the field, this electron will try to move from over here to here. Okay, so it will move from V value to U value. Okay, it will move itself in the conduction band from V value to U value. Okay, and this is this is the reason for what it is showing. It will show it will show the negative resistance region. It will show the negative resistance region. Now, why it will show? Let us see that why it will show that property. What is the reason behind that? What is the reason behind that? Is the reason behind that is for V value for V value. You will have you will have the effective mass is equal to 0.072 mo. Okay, and the mobility will be equal to 0.5 meter square per volt second. Okay, for V value. Remember, we are discussing for V value. Now we will discuss for U value. U value, we will be having M2 is equal to 1.2 mo and mobility is 0.01 meter square per volt second. Now see over here, <coughs> it is clearly visible that going from V value to U value, you will see the mass is increasing. The effective mass of an electron increases. The effective mass of an electron increases. Over here, over here in the V value, over here in the V value it was 0.072 mo. While in the upper value it increases to 1.2 mo. And with the increase in mass, this mobility decreases. Okay? <clears throat> this is nothing but mobility. This is the mobility. Okay, this mu is mobility. This is also mobility. Okay, this is also mobility. So mobility decreases. You see, in B value, it was having 0.5 meter square per volt second over here. At U value, it will have 0.01 meter square per volt second. So this is the reason. Change in the energy band, change in the energy band, in the conduction band itself, change in the energy levels, change in the energy levels from this V value bands to U value bands will try to increase the effective mass of an electron. Increasing the effective mass of an electron will decrease the mobility. Remember, will decrease the mobility. Okay, will decrease the mobility. And decreasing mobility will give rise to negative resistance. 
decrease in mobility will gives rise to negative resistance region okay so this is all about the uh, working of u valley and v valley from valence band working in between the lower valley and upper valley in the conduction band with respect to the applied field there is a certain threshold field there is a certain threshold field approximately it is 3.3 kV per centimeter above which this uh, above which this inter valley transfer that is from v valley transfer to u valley transfer v valley transfer to u valley transfer will take place and this is also known as population inversion okay this is also known as population inversion okay this is also known as population inversion okay so this is all about the working of with respect to energy band here we have already seen the construction of a gandar uh, the energy band energy bands associated in the gas gallium arsenide in the gandar okay now let us see the iv relationship of a gandar okay iv relationship of a gandar or let us see first of all first of all we will see the construction we will see the construction of a gandar okay we will see the construction <coughs> we will see the construction of a gandar that is it will have We will have two, three layers in between it, and we will have another active layer. This is gold plated stuff. Gold plated molybdenum stuff. Gold plated molybdenum stuff. And this is the contact layer. This is the contact layer. This is the active region. This is the active region, and over here you will have top contact. So this is the top contact and tin dot. It will have a tin dot. Okay. Let me draw it again. This is tin dot. Okay, as I told you that it will have a point contact. This is the point contact. This is the point contact. As we are discussing, this is the point contact, and we will have a tin dot on this active layer. This active layer is nothing but gallium arsenide layer. We will have a contact layer that is the back contact. Back contact is connected to the active region. Active region, as we have already seen, the energy band gap of gallium arsenide, and over that, as I told you, we will have a point contact. It will have a point contact made up of tin. 
this is the tin element which is been used to make tin dot okay that is that is nothing but the contact so this is the uh, internal block of gun diode uh, in case if you want to see the whole structure then this will be arranged in a closed space this will be closed okay this will be in a closed container this will also be in a closed container this will be in a closed back structure okay you can have more structure of this you can have and it will have this kind of structure okay and we will also have top cap i am not having enough space this is the top cap top cap okay these are two contacts this is the one contact this is the another one this is the another one this will be the structure of the gun diode internal structure of a gun diode okay this will be the internal structure of a gun diode this will be a gold wire with t dot it will also be a gold wire okay this is also coated with gold plated molybdenum stuff it will also have gold wire with t dot so this is the internal structure of a gun diode okay now let us see the relation between iv the current and voltage relation of gun diode and we will able to see that after some voltage or after applying some potential it will be we will be able to see the decrease okay so this is electric field this v and this is current density this is the current density now we will see this is nothing but the j characteristics of a gun diode this is nothing but the j characteristics of a gun diode remember when you will when you talk about the current density current density is represented by j when you talk about the current density it is represented by j i is nothing but current but when you discuss the current with respect to surface uh, with respect to the constant area that is current density you will represent j okay you will represent it by j you will represent it by j now let us see that what is the behavior what we will be seeing is we will have this kind of graph going ahead at one point this decreases and again it increases okay so this is the current at which it is giving negative okay and this region okay this region this whole region this is this itself including both of them okay and that is negative differential mobility region this is nothing but negative mobility differential region okay so if you imagine if you imagine 
E के डायग्राम दिस इज के दिस इज ई इफ यू इमेजिन देन वी यूज टू हैव दिस बैलेंस बैंड वी हैव दिस वी वैली एंड यू वैली ओके सो दिस इज कंडक्शन बैंड दिस इज वी वैली एंड दिस इज यू वैली ओके दिस इज यू वैली दिस वो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस बट इफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन इज गोइंग फ्रॉम व्हाट वी हैव बी अ in this region after this region after this region okay this happens with this voltage this happens with this amount of voltage it will have certain voltage when you increase the voltage beyond this point beyond this point what you are going to observe is uh, when you increase the voltage then what you will observe is this electron is going to move in the upper band this electron is going to move in the u band region and in that u valley region it is having higher effective mass and due to higher effective mass its mobility decreases okay so you will find that decrease negative differential mobility region you will be finding negative differential mobility region and the current is decreasing due to the blocking of electrons in the u valley blocking of electrons in the u valley due to lower mobility due to less mobility decrease in mobility and that is the thing about the negative differential mobility region okay so this is all about the gun diagram